Hi, Phil Aston here from Now Spinning Magazine with another episode of Chart Watch and Music Biz Chat with me, Phil Aston. Um, week four this is, and this is where I'm just going to look at the sales for the number one album in the UK album chart. Just to, out of interest to look at the breakdown between CD and vinyl, and then also look about some other things that I think are worth talking about in the world of music. So, what is number one? Number one, I'm just going to focus on two things. Number one is Green Day um, with Saviors, which has gone straight in number one, which is what we're used to. But also number number 19 is Saxon with Hellfire and Damnation. A review um, is on the Now Spinning website as I speak. Uh, and it's an absolutely fantastic album. We saw um, Magnum go in at about number 69 last week, but Saxon are well in at number 19. So what are the numbers? Well, for Green Day, as I say, Saviour is 31,361 units have got it to number one. And the physical breakdown, the physical, number of physical sales for that was 26,498. So the way that breaks down is that's 14,955 CDs. 10,420 vinyl albums, 1,124 cassettes, 1,493 downloads and 3,369 sales equivalent streams. So obviously there was more CDs sold by about 5,000 units to 10,000, 10,500 vinyl albums. But 1,124 cassettes, now you can't get them on Amazon. So how is this working everybody? Tell me if you bought a cassette last week. How did you get it? Did it come bundled with an album or a CD or did you get it from the gig? I just, I'm just fascinated to know how this, how this is working. Right, and the other one I want to look at is Saxon. Um, who've made the top 20. This is a 26 studio album and it, and it sold 4,226. Okay, which is a massive... Um, jump from the last one not in sales but position wise because the last album got to about number 126 so this one's got to number 19 now the other thing i wanted to mention on this because i'll just i'll just touch on and i might be able to bring this on screen as well that obviously saxon are in the official record store chart which is the top 20 based on physical sales only of cd vinyl and cassettes and they're at number five um so that's great for them and they're also in the indie album chart as well uh, at number one so saxon at number one and i think magnum of us are at number 12 still so there's still lots of rock music and stuff in there but what i wanted to talk about really in this episode is the way that sales and numbers are used and this is why i think that the the charts are a kind of like finger in the air to roughly what's going on because it's not the whole story when i spoke to karen emmanuel from key production and she looked at the number of cds sold or vinyl um, albums sold she actually said that her company pressed and sold more than that themselves on their own so not everything that gets sold is going through the chart system so this is why i think a lot of people confused and a lot of people said on um the facebook group last week you know how could magnum only have sold two and a half thousand copies and got to number 68 when so many people obviously went out and bought the album and got it it's because a lot of the sales aren't registering or counted so that's why it's kind of like a a feel for what's going on more than anything and there was an article in the Guardian this week about this, that a lot of bands are literally 30% of their sales are from gigs. You know, literally at the end of a gig, the band themselves rush down to the merch table and sell vinyl albums. Now, none of those sales are registered by the charts at all. You know, literally somebody in the charts can, you know, can sell 3,000 cassettes and bundle them in with a, with a vinyl album and those cassettes get counted as a sale. So it, that will kind of like colour the charts in some ways because it's counted as two sales and it pushes that band further up the charts. But another band who's selling five times as much as that um, at their own gigs, they don't get counted or they're selling them via their own website. They don't. They don't get counted, even though they technically are probably doing better. But the charts carries such a status in that way. 
Um, so I find that really, really interesting. The other thing is that it's so hard for musicians at the moment. You know, you, you've got, you play the gig, you play in a one and a half hour, two hour set, and then afterwards you're going to run downstairs and sell the, be at your own merch table, obviously to save money. One of the things that's kind of like, must be difficult for musicians it's so it's so difficult you know the money you get from streaming is that so many venues take a 20 percent, 30 percent cut of what the bands sell on their own merch table I, I i do i mean a lot of grassroots venues don't do that they take nothing i mean they make they're selling beer they're selling alcohol they're selling food they're selling other things i mean you know and those people are coming in because of that band Without that band, those people would not be there. And I do think that, you know, the venue's taking that higher cut on a T-shirt when they've had nothing to do with it. Um, you know, I, I, I think that's a... I think that's needs to be looked at, really. That's just me personally. I mean, does it need to be that much? If you, any, other, any other world where you had... If you're selling crafts and stuff, you pay for a table, you know... You know, in a venue, if you're doing a record, a record, a collector's fair, you pay for a table, and obviously, but you you wouldn't you wouldn't pay a percentage on every album you you sold in a record fair or something like that. So, I think you know, venues. I know it's a struggle, but I think everyone needs to kind of pull together on this. Really, that's just my personal opinion. And if you're a venue watching this, thinking Phil, you don't know what you're talking about, then you explain why. But I just think for a lot of bands coming up. You know, thinking that they're literally selling all that stuff and they've got a pay cut seems 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 a bit seems a bit much. So I've just wanted to say that so that you are when you see the numbers, it's a it's a it's kind of like a litmus test to saying, well, this is how things are going. And 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 vinyl obviously is doing well, but so is the CD. And this is why I do this because literally every number one album there are more CD sales. Than vinyl sales week on week but we'll see how it goes but i am multi-format man and now spinning magazine supports all formats so you know the fact is physical music being connected to the album brings us closer to the art and the artist so thank you for watching thank you for being here thank you for all of your support and all of your comments and input remember to subscribe ring that little bell join the facebook group become a patron youtube member or you can just buy me a coffee or a drink at coffee and i shall see you all very very soon